A short while ago now, I asked all of you what you wanted to see in the next big update for DaVinci Resolve, whether that's DaVinci Resolve 19.5 or DaVinci Resolve 20. I think 20 would be fun. We're extremely likely to see that update at NAB in about like two months or so. So I was thinking about all my high minded dreams of things I would like to see in Resolve. I wanted to know what all of you thought. So in this video, I'm gonna walk through some of your answers. We're gonna talk a lot about sort of the big sections that multiple people talked about or requested a feature for. There were a couple big trends or areas of interest that, um, you know, lots of the conversation sort of coalesced around. So that's what this video will be. But first, I wanna run through um, some of the more or like miscellaneous um, recommendations or things people ask for that I just thought were cool that I thought like might spawn some more conversation. So it's time for a little speed round. Someone specifically asked for some alternate behavior when you try to drag a transition um, between two clips that don't have any, you know, frames to, you know, play that transition. Some other software handles this in a different way than Resolve, possibly creating a still frame from those videos. But yeah, I think this would be a, a useful feature. I was surprised that a handful of people just requested uh, more effects, which makes sense. Cool. Yeah, let's do more. Um, Resolve has like sort of smashed mattered in over the last couple of updates. Some new like titles and transitions effects. So I can see some of those coming our way. Someone talked about the uh, box you type expressions in in Fusion and how uh, sometimes it can be really hard to see what's happening in that little box. And if there was a simple pop out feature that let you just see your entire expression, that could be neat. A lot of the time I write my expressions just in like the notepad app and copy them over, but you know, a little more flexibility in Fusion would be nice. Bringing over the spectral frequency display um, from something like Audition to the Fairlight page. Um, one person requested that, but that's something I have seen sort of in the space about for a long time. A better option to preview fonts. You see the list and you can sort of scroll through them pretty easily, but actually like seeing the differences in those fonts in the drop down, that'd be nice. A solid handful of people requested like the puppet tool from After Effects. I would be kind of surprised if we got something like two straight one-to-one -one copy, but we might. And you know, people would definitely use it. A few people requested this, but I know it's much more of like a general thing the community wants, maybe in the Fairlight page. Also a better option to like quickly or natively create presets on just like whatever's happening in the inspector, whether that's your um, default transform options and animations you've got going on, or even creating new presets from like existing fusion presets without, you know, third party tools or diving into fusion, handle that in the inspector somehow, that'd be super cool. The ability to see your audio waveforms when you shrink the timeline to its smallest view. Right now they go away entirely, but they could just do that sort of like, you know, half waveform view where it just like comes from the bottom of the clip. So like, it, it's like not very much space, but you can still get some visuals in there. And linked to sort of space in your editor workflow, someone requested like a keyboard shortcut to quickly close all of like the keyframe and retiming windows that happen in the edit page. Those do increase the size that each track takes up in your sort of timeline view. And a quick way to sort of clear all those out, not delete them, but just like shrink them back down. I, I think that'd be cool. Spell check, that'd be useful. A different way to handle um, how Resolve errors out if you are using an effect that wants to use a font that you don't have installed. Right now, you just sort of like, yeah, it doesn't work. It's a black screen or some other error. Um, but like communicating that to the user would be nice. And finally, macros with sound or uh, better ways to use sound in the Fusion page, which would then like propagate out into presets. Yes, absolutely. That would change a lot of what I do. <laughs> if you appreciate videos like this, you should visit sterlingsupply.co. This is my website where you can download dozens of presets, plugins, and effects for DaVinci Resolve. Many of these presets are completely free. Several are paid premium products and website members also receive a bundle of those premium products along with exclusive extras like in-depth breakdowns of my newest presets. Why not check out my Layout Pro preset pack? Choose from either the V2 version or the new Layout Pro Blocks Pack to arrange up to 25 video clips instantly in frame. Completely fill the frame with Layout Pro Blocks or choose from advanced frame and drop shadow controls with Layout Pro V2. My ongoing work is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. Wow, what a cool little lightning round of requests that sure, I would love to see all of those come to resolve. But now I wanna talk about some sort of like broader areas where lots of these requests sort of like rotated around. I think I have like six or seven of them. Mostly I just wanna communicate that these are specific areas where some of the actual like requests might've been for like smaller, like different details, but lots of people want these general areas looked at. Whether that attention will get given, we might have some conversation about, because the first one I wanna focus on, which by far had the most different requests sort of uh, around the spectrum of this kind of one feature is AI. 
Now, while I did have two specific comments that said, uh, I don't know, they can update whatever they want, just don't throw more AI in Resolve. There were far, far many more people that had requests that in some way touched on AI. Now, some of those um, were talking about the existing AI tools in Resolve, something like Magic Mask, like just asking that Magic Mask gets better in some specific way. I lumped that in with some of like this AI tools discussion, but several people were just straight up like, hey, add generative AI into Resolve. I don't think that's gonna happen. I think money is a perfectly valid reason that won't happen. If you look at where Resolve sits for Blackmagic design, but also just the kind of company Blackmagic is, the kind of things they have done so far are more for like specific useful tools. The sort of like mini suite of AI audio tools we got last year, incredible. Magic Mask, awesome kind of that more like machine learning route versus generative AI. If I had to pick out the most um, specific thing requested sort of in this bundle was people asking for that generative AI remix tool that Adobe has, where if you have a music track, you can stretch it out or shrink it and it will sort of like re remake new music or take it away but to sort of like fit better in that smaller view. It is a very cool feature and I do think that if Resolve were to go more into generative AI, that would probably maybe be the extent of how far they would go. I don't think we'll get text to video or even like text to speech, sort of that generative AI. And no, for the people who requested it, I don't think we will get a super master type in, edit this video for me and Resolve will edit your video. There was a lot of diversity in how people uh, wanted Resolve to like use AI in different ways. You can go back and check out those comments or, you know, leave more comments here talking about what you want AI to do and whether you want that to be available in Resolve or not. Obviously a lot is changing quickly with AI in general. And while obviously Blackmagic Design wants big flashy updates, um, I don't think generative AI will be quite the way they go about it. Now this next section of requests is something I have been kind of against for a while, but my opinion is slowly changing. And that is more highly customizable UI. You look at something like Premiere, you can move windows all over the place, completely customize stuff. And like I said, I was, I was against that for a while. I like standard UI layouts, and especially with all the different pages in Resolve, um, I think it makes sense to have like workspace for each of those pages that just makes best sense. Um, one of the things that slowly started to change my mind was people specifically talk about workflows for editing vertical video. Having a main viewer sort of just live on the side of your screen to show that full vertical video while uh, keeping your space on the rest of the screen, that makes sense. Um, as well as sort of like two monitor layouts. More customization there, I think, just makes so much more sense. And I believe sort of like the way I was thinking about it is closer to what like Blackmagic has been at for a while, but I could see them being convinced by some of these new rationales as well. Obviously the big challenge is specific features that live on different pages. How much are you going to let a user sort of use multiple pages at once? Is that even something Resolve could possibly handle? I don't know. But I do know that this is something people are specifically asking for. Just more flexibility in general with their workspace. People are also specifically asking for um, maybe not new features, but expressing frustration with keyframing. I had comments both specifically about the edit page and the fusion page, uh, cause you got like the spline viewer and the keyframe viewer in the fusion page. And on the edit page, you have a few different ways to look at keyframes. I think one of the biggest like just straight up like long-standing bugs is that uh, easing on the edit page just for um, that XY motion, especially partnered with Zoom, it's just busted. This might be the area where I had the most number of comments that were just like, hey, fix this or like put a lot of energy into this. Um, understandably, it can be hard to sort of think about like specific ways to fix something that just feels uh, uh, more complex or like feels more frustrating than it should be. But I think this is super valuable as feedback because it's not just like, hey, add this feature. It's, hey, look at this pain point and see what we can come up with. I will note that in the Fusion page, even for like basic uh, like keyframe retiming, um, I almost never open up like this actual like keyframe viewer. I handle all that in sort of the, the splines viewer, the spline editor. And I really like the spline editor. It's powerful. I can retime things the way I need. I can add easing. It felt pretty natural for me moving over from uh, After Effects with their like motion graph. But I can absolutely understand people's frustration, especially if they only work with keyframe on the edit page. And like I said, even without uh, specific recommendations, this is a pain point for users. Now this next area, super fun to talk about, but also I believe I definitely got more comments about this, 
because of the work here I do on this channel. I talk a lot about Fusion, I talk a lot about Fusion macros, um, and with all the presets and plugins that I create and I give away and I sell, I have a fair number of people sort of in that specific space that watch this channel, and I had a number of comments asking um, for lots of focus to a complete rewrite of the macro editor and the custom controls editor. If you know, you absolutely know, and if you don't, all I'll say is that some of the more advanced but powerful features in the Fusion haven't had attention paid to them in a very, very long time. And if you want to do things like I do of making your own presets and plugins for Fusion, it is more complicated than it needs to be, absolutely. We have a number of people in the community who have started making like tools to like improve this process, but I don't doubt just a little bit of focus from Blackmagic Design, from Resolve, um, could make this better for everyone. I, we actually did get a small straight up update to the contr uh, custom controls editor, uh, just like a version or two ago that added some cool features, including a feature um, that really made my um, easier ease plugin work at all. I have a plugin to just add um, eased motion onto whatever uh, transform keyframes you make inside the effect. And that sort of auto ease functionality um, was, was made to an update in the custom controls editor. So maybe that's like a cool little portent for things to come. And the last few sections will be quicker overall, um, but I had multiple people ask for, um, in general, like, issues with text. Text formatting, some basic things like uh, word wrap people have wanted for a long time, possibly some way to interact um, with modifiers on the app page if you need to use something like character level styling. And that naturally segues into issues with uh, captions. The audio, the auto captioning features in Resolve are super cool. People had requests that it just like works better. Sometimes it can be a little over eager, like cutting off the beginning or ending of sentences. And when that captioning transitions into like more stylized subtitles, lots of people have requests. We can make really cool animated fusion titles, but there is not a built-in way to sort of connect the auto captioning feature to those more stylized titles. I also had lots of people just request uh, more languages being added to captions. That can, that's something um, I can even say, like, I would expect that to happen if this is a feature. Um, that Resolve and Blackmagic want people all around the world using, it makes sense they would add more languages. Um, I want to specifically call out that I had a surprising amount of people specifically request Polish. So in the off chance is anyone at Blackmagic is watching this, the people in Poland are speaking. So listen to the people in Poland and add Polish to the caption support. And I think maybe the last thing I want to talk about um, is better vector graphic support on the edit page, you know, a way to handle scaling for those graphics without losing detail, of course. And in the Fusion page, this is an even bigger conversation. We have the shape system, but if you like import a vector SVG graphic, it still recreates that in the older sort of like mask graphic, which like does not scale like the shape system, as well as just continuing to beef up the shape system, which is very cool. The things they've added into the shape system over the last like two or three years, um, that is probably the area in Fusion that maybe has had the most like actual progressive focus. Hopefully that continues. That's the big stuff on the list that I have made after coming through all the comments on that past video. Feel free um, to re-up any of those requests in the comments on this video. Have some more conversation among yourselves. Specifically, you know, thoughts about AI, that is always going to be an interesting conversation. And I don't doubt we might have more interesting conversations uh, after the fact once we get that next big update. But whatever we get, it's going to be exciting. It always is. Not to mention, you know, whatever else they do at NAB. New cameras, new hardware, I don't know. Um, I mostly talk about Resolve, but it's all exciting. Even like their TV stuff, which I will never use, it's still exciting. It was very cool hearing from all of you. It was very cool like going through all of your comments. I'm happy to share this all um, with you. Um, I thought it was cool, hopefully you do too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.